Are we on? You're live. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Hello. How are you today? Are you all happy and sunny? <laughs> Go for it, kid. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Um, so glad you've come to the class. And um, if you haven't been to the class before, I'm Sheila Christensen. I've got the shop quilters laid in Masterton. And while we're on lockdown at the moment, I'm doing all these classes on Facebook Live from home. So um, we've done a class on back to basics. I've been doing a triangle class on Thursdays. And today we thought, since we've made our first beginning quilt in the back to basics three classes, and we've done the quilting and the binding, we're now going to start on some traditional blocks. So we're going to make a churn dash block. Good morning, churn Helen. Blocks. Good morning, Good Jill. Good morning. Morning, Helen and Jill. Hi. So here's the blocks I made yesterday. Um, I went pink, which is unusual for me, but there we go. Um, so I've made a 12 inch block. These would be your finished sizes in the quilt. 12 inches, nine inches, six inches, three inches. So I'll just talk to you a little bit about how the block works. Let's Hi Jane. Hi, Hi Trish. <laughs> so let's focus down on this block here. This is our nine inch block. Now the reason why they made those particular sizes is those are the ones that are easy to calculate. Um, because it's a nine inch block and this is a three by three grid then each of these sections ends up three inches finished. So by finished, we mean when all the seams are sewn into the quilt. When to get a three inch finished square in the middle here, we have to cut it at three and a half inches. So it's easy to scale this three by three if, you, if what you have as your finished size is divisible by three. So that's why we can make a nine inch block there, that's got three inch squares. The 12 inch block, that's got four inch squares. The six inch block, with my little deer in the middle, that's got two inch squares finished. And even a little baby three inch block that has a one inch square finished. Um, and the other thing is that then, if you want to make a quilt with all churn dashes, you can make them fit together like a puzzle because you can put your 12 there and your nine there and then you can put three down here um, and just build up from there. If I wanted to make an eight inch block, I would have to divide the eight by three and I get two and two thirds. I haven't seen a ruler that will tell me two and two thirds, so I just don't go there, it's too hard. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is picking your colors. We've got, I've put some notes up on the website, so some of you may have already downloaded those. I've done a diagram of the block and each of these pieces has a label. So this is your piece A, which is your center square. Often you can use this square. It's really fun to fussy cut and feature something nice in the middle. So I have this lovely fabric here. I actually started off thinking I was going to put that one in the middle. And then I decided, no, that's just too much contrast because I've got this really soft pink here. If I put a brighter pink in, then that might have worked okay. But since I had that fabric, I thought I'll go with that one. You do find that anything you've got with the highest contrast will draw your eye into the middle, um, will draw your eye to that, to that fabric. So, um, it's quite good to put your contrast, high contrast fabric somewhere towards the middle. But you don't have to fussy cut the centre in this one. I didn't fussy cut my centre, I fussy cut these little rectangles. And it, a lot of it is to do with what's the scale of your fabric. Because if I did a very large square, I mean the, the tigers would be okay. But if I did a four inch square, they might get a little bit lost in there. Whereas for this lady here, she fills up the space. Um, in this one, I had this lovely fabric with the deer. So, I mean, he just had to be fussy cut and go in the middle. And in this one, 
the key thing I think I did really was to use this stripe. And you'll see that some of these blocks are just made of two different fabrics. So this one, just two fabrics, that's all that's in there. So I've got my main pattern in the blue and everything else is in the pink. This one here, I've got four fabrics, but they're similar um, types of color. So I've got a creamy around here and creamy with butterflies here. I've got a pink in the middle and a different pink on the outside. Often people struggle with putting pinks together that aren't the same pink. This is an orangey pink and this is more of a bluey pink. But as so long as you put lots of different pinks in, it will make your quilt really interesting. Um, this one here just has three fabrics. So I used one for the center, one for the churn dash and one for the background. This one here, I've used one in the center and it's also actually here and here. And then I put the stripe here and one around the background. So you can play with it, change your combinations around as much as you like. It's really fun to do. And that's, that will sort of keep your interest up as you're making a quilt if you want to do it with all this block. So let's have a look at how to fussy cut these center blocks. So if I was going to use this fabric here, you can see that I have already cut one out. So I chose the larger pattern, the larger motif, because I was making the 12 inch block. But what if I was going to make, I need my cutter, I didn't bring it over here. What if I was going to make a smaller block? Let's have a look. We'll find it. Here it is, I've got it. Okay, so say I wanted to put this one in the middle. I can put my ruler on and have a look and see where I'm going to be. So that would make sense in, say I was going to do a nine inch block and I have a three and a half square in the middle. This is where three and a half comes to, here and here. And that would go quite nicely in there. So what are you lining up? So I'm lining up these lines here and I'm just going to get my tape so I can show you how that works. So a nice way to focus on where you're looking is to actually mark it with a bit of tape. So I could mark where I'm going to cut, which is three and a half. Oops, occupational hazard, thread. So put some masking tape on my ruler on the three and a half lines. I'll see where I'm going to be. But don't forget also, you've got your seam lines. So you could put your tape on. I'll put this one. You could put your tape on the three and a quarter. Like that. Three and a quarter. That will, that will take away what's going to disappear in the seam. Um, and I could put some masking tape on this quarter inch, but I happen to have this lovely quarter inch tape. He's a wonderful assistant. He knows exactly what I need. There we go. So this is called ruler tape and this will give you your quarter inch. So you can see where you are. Some people make a viewing window with cardboard, but that really shows you where, where she's going to be framed once everything's sewn in. So I could put that face in there, or I could go with this one. If I wanted to include the cherries, I'd have to cut her hair off a bit, so that won't work too well. Quite like the idea of having a cherry in there. What about this face down here? So I could get that one in, that would work. I think I might go for that one. So then I will usually decide which motif I'm going to do, find the one that's nearest to the edge of the fabric, so I'm not creating a huge hole right in the middle, and put my ruler on where I want it to be positioned. I'm now gonna take this, just take this tape out of the way because it'll get in my way. 
pull that back. So I'm going to cut these two lines here first, up here and across there. And it's the easiest thing is if you can take it out of an edge because then you're not having to fiddle around in the middle of the fabric. So I've got two sides cut, I just need to cut the other two sides now. So I'm going to turn it right around to face me. And then I need to take this off so I can see where I am. I need to put my three and a half inch line on the sides that I've just cut. Okay, so this three and a half is now on the lines that I cut the first time so that I can cut here and here. Cut there. Cut there. Oops. There we go. So she's ready to go in the center. So my next job is to cut the pieces that are going to go around. So I have to think, what do I want to put around here? So I could go with something pink like that and do it similar to that other block, but I don't really want to make another block the same. I could go with this blue. So you could just lay it down on there, have a look and see what you like. I could go with that one, but I don't feel like I've got really enough contrast there. Um, I could go with strawberries, but I quite like that. I do quite like that. Let's go with the strawberries. Some people would find that too busy, but I like it. Okay, so I'm going to fussy cut the strawberries as well. So I'm going to do with this um, what I did last time um, is, which is to place the fabric with the selvage towards me because I'm going to cut a strip off this fabric before I start cutting it down. So it's nice and easy to make sure my motifs are all straight before I cut. So fold that back, I can see my strawberries are in a line. So everything's quite straight. So I'm going to neaten off the side. Now, what's my cutting size? It's going to be, oh, it's going to be, what am I making, a six inch, no, I'm making a nine inch block, so it's going to be two inches by three and a half inches. And that's all in your notes, those sizes. Didn't bring my notes in here. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get it right. So I know that I'm going to be cutting at two inches. Okay, so let's put a piece of tape down. And so if I'm cutting at two inches, my seam is going to come in a quarter of an inch before the two inches at one and three quarters, isn't it? There. And my other seam. Where's the end of my tape? It's usually just hanging out. There it is. My other seam is going to be on the cut side quarter of an inch. So I'm not going to get two strawberries in there. If I cut it there, I'm going to just have a gap with half a strawberry either side. So if I cut it here, I'm going to get whole strawberries in. And I can also look at where I've lined up my strawberry. So I've got the bottom of this strawberry here on that white line there, if you can see that. Okay, so that's that line there. So if I keep that line on the bottom of the strawberry, I'm going to be nice and straight as well. Excellent. I like that one. So let's just neaten off. So my neatening off is a bit big because of fussy cutting. You do waste a bit of fabric. Can't be helped. And then I'm going to turn my ruler and my, oh sorry, turn my fabric over. Take my tape off because it's in my way. And put the two inch line on the edge there. And then cut. I 
Okay. So now I want some slices of this. A, a three and a half inches. So I might just guess these because we're not going to get three whole strawberries in, but we can have it with a red strawberry in the middle. Or we can just be random. And I think I'm just going to be random at this point. So I'm just going to cut some three and a half inch slices because we're going to get enough strawberries in each piece. Sometimes it's quite good not to just plonk motifs in the middle of things because they look a bit forced and contrived. So being random is sometimes good. There we go. And we do have a couple of red strawberries and some pink strawberries. So we're starting to build up now. We've got this one. We've got these. And these go this way and that way, so it doesn't matter which way up they go. I might put the red opposite the red, but then again, no, I'll put it up here. I'm balancing these two strawberries then. There, okay, so now background. I'm going to pick one of my low volume backgrounds. So I've picked out a lot of these. These have actually all got a fairly creamy, see this is blush colour in the background but these are sort of fairly creamy based fabrics and these ones are very white based this one not so much but these are very white based for the look of my quilt I want to keep it quite soft so you can mix and mix them in but I'm going to actually leave out the black and white and the things that are very very white based and just stick with my soft colours here so I think I might pick Let's have a look and see what this one will look like. I think that's a bit too much. This one's nice because it's got the bit of pink in. It gives me a bit of interest. Or I could put this one. So much fun playing with your fat quarter collection and your scraps and things. Um, I think I'm going to choose this one, just keep that fairly plain. Of course, this is one of the ones I didn't press before the class, so I shall just go and give it a press. While she's doing that, we'll say hi to Sue from Waikanae Beach. Lee, sitting in her car. Jojo, what's going on? <laughs> Carolyn, hello, how are you? Kathy, glad your techie finally came home. Sue Ellen, how's, how's things in Blenheim? You don't need me to show you how, show you what it looks like to iron a piece of cloth, do you? <laughs> no. Pretty nice weather today. You want to be playing golf. I want to be playing golf, but that's a, another week away, it looks like. At least. <laughs> okay, so this one is just a bit of a random piece from my... Um, Draws, so I'm going to cut two inches off the bottom here rather than cutting a full length strip. That might have been that looks like it might have been a backing fabric. No, this was a background fabric from oh, it's Somewhere. an Elizabeth Hartman fabric, so I'm thinking I think I used it in one of the quilts in the book. I think I used it in the apple blossom time. And this is what I've got left. Now, I think I, I might get two, but I'll, I'll see. We'll save time. So I need four pieces, and they're going to be two inches by three and a half, the same as the other ones. Easy to go on the outside. So I'll just stack them all up to do it quickly. As long as they're lined up, you can stack them. Okay, trim off that side and then put my three and a half line on here. Oops, I'll turn it around and go right handed and be good. Okay, three and a 
three and a half inch line. Oh, is that three and a half? You got it on the three. I got it on there. I'm using the, the black, black markings the black marker today. <laughs> I'm very consistent. Not <laughs> okay. So that's all four of my pieces. So we've got those. Now I'm going to also make the outside triangles. I'm going to make the outside triangles from this. I'm going to show you three different ways to do the outside triangles. Okay, so I'm doing these triangles now. Okay, the first way I'm going to show you is what you might see in quite a few patterns where they will just say, if it's going to be finished at three inches, you will cut a three and seven eighths inch square and then cut it once on the diagonal. So let's try that one. Three and seven eighths. So here's the ruler divisions. Shall I use the black ones again, just to be consistent? Okay. Each tiny mark here is an eighth of an inch. So if I find the four inch mark here, three and seven eighths, is one mark before the four inches. So I'm going to line it up on that mark there, just before the four inches, that's three and seven eighths. And I'm going to cut a square. So three and seven eighths. Lining up on there, everything is nice and straight. There's my square. So to cut my half square triangle, I put the ruler from this corner to this corner and I cut across like that. Okay, so that's two half square triangles. That's my first method of doing it and I need the matching ones, so I'm going to use my strawberries again. I'm actually going to use my square ruler, I like my square ruler. So three and seven eighths, just before the four. So that's three and a half, that's four, so that's three and seven eighths. I'm going to oversize it first. Okay, and then I can trim it down, and that's so that I can get my strawberries fairly square on in there. So I'm cutting a bigger square first. Okay, then I'm going to turn it around. And then I'm going to put the three and seven eighths. Three and seven eighths. So three and seven eighths is one eighth before four, or if you're working from the three and a half, three and a half is four eighths, okay? So that's five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. So we've got three and a half, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, so I'm correct. Okay, and then I'm going to slice it across. Like that. Okay, so let's go and sew those. There's a couple of tricky things when you've cut pieces like this. One is you've got a big long bias edge here, so that is liable to stretching. I do find that if you use decent quilting cottons, you get less problems but and also it's really really hard to cut those exactly the same size these these are pretty good but they're not exactly right have I got my right side always check on your cream fabric yes there we go right sides together that's been done many times and I'm actually matching up the outside here not this line here just pop a pin in. And you can see that when you feed it into your machine, you've got this really sharp point, And that's nasty because those can get swallowed up by the machine. So to get over that, I start with 
Some people call it a thread saver. Some people call it leaders and enders. Some people even use them and so organised that they make them into quilts. But I just use them as scraps. So I'm going to start sewing on that. And just sew to the end of it. Okay, I haven't got my pivot on. Have I? Okay, and then I can then feed this in. I'm going to use this outside line here for my guide. And then that way it doesn't swallow the corner of the triangle up. And what you can do also is if you, you I often have a couple of these on the go because if you finish on that as well, if you've got a, the machine, a machine without a cutter and you're always having to cut off long pieces of thread, that will take care of your thread and keep it nice and neat and not waste a load of thread every time you start and stop. So we'll do that one and let's do this one. That's the iron turning off. Let's go and give these a press. So I'm going to press the stitches down. I've got the darker fabric on the top. Then I fold it back and carefully press. I don't want to be doing that wiggle thing. There's one. Let's go and see how well we did here. So what we're aiming for here is that this unit should be the same size as the centre square, which is three and a half inches. So I'm going to put it on with this seam going through that way and put this line from my ruler on top and the three and a half inches along here and it's okay. That's actually pretty good. That's probably one of the best ones I've ever done. There you go. So I'm just going to take that little bunny ear off. That makes a huge difference. And we'll take this one off as well. A little bit under. And we'll do the same with this one. <coughs> It's good when the plan comes together. Oh, it is. This is the trickiest way to do it. But it's not perfect. Okay, but they'll do. They'll work. Okay, now I'm going to make two using the other method, which is the method that's in your notes, because it's the easiest. We are going to, instead of cutting a three and seven eighths square, we're going to cut a four and a quarter square. So let's put our ruler on four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. So quarter inch is two of the marks. So there's three and a half, three and three quarters, four, four and a quarter. Four and a quarter over there. So one of those, don't cut it in half yet, and a strawberry one, I love these strawberries, so cute, four and a quarter, and this one actually 
is not critical. If you get it slightly wrong, it's not going to matter. Okay. So there's my two squares. I'm going to place them right sides together and I'm going to put the cream one on top, I think. Now I need my marker pen. You can use a pencil, any, any marker, really. You can even use a biro if you need to. I'm going to draw a line down the center. That's going to be my cutting line when I've finished. Now I'm going to put my ruler with just a quarter of an inch on that line. And I actually bring it slightly to my, the other side of the line, slightly to this side, okay? Because you've got the thickness of pen to think about. Draw another line. Okay, so that's my one sewing line. Turn it around. Do the same thing. Quarter of an inch on the center line, just slightly on my side of it. And then that's my other sewing line. So now I'm going to sew down this line and this line. Okay, so there's that one. Can you see? Such great camera work. Now when you're doing a lot of these, you can actually just feed the next one in, the next one in. Um, I can even do this. Look, pull that out a bit. She says being cocky. I haven't got my leader in there. No, let's cut it off. to stay on the line all the way to the end. Right, now we're going to cut that in half. So get my ruler. There's no measuring to do here. We're just cutting down that line in the middle and then we'll go and press them. So the advantage of this is we've not had to deal with any bias because it stayed whole while we sewed it. Press the stitches in. Take it open. Just the main thing here is just to try to make sure you haven't got pleats. So you haven't got fabric caught underneath there. What happened to those lines? Your pen. Oh look, it disappeared. It was a friction marker. You're so good. <laughs> okay, so you'll see that these are bigger than they need to be. Okay, we delibor deliberately did that because now we can trim them to the exact right size. So to trim it, I'm going to put my, ooh, bang, bang. put my ruler on with the diagonal line on the seam. And the advantage of this is we will have the seams running right through the corners and that will help our points. The other thing I need to do is make sure that my three and a half inch line is on top of fabric all the way along here and all the way along there. Because if I started trimming out here, I'd make my square too small. So three and a half is on there, diagonal line is on the seam. I can do my first two cuts. One cut, two cuts, turn it around. This time I actually put the three and a half on the cut edges. There and there, and my seam should be under that line, which it is, good. Cut. And cut. So that's now perfect. 
So if you see on Instagram people trimming up hundreds of um, half square triangles, this is what they're doing. So my three and a half inch line is on top of fabric. My line from the ruler is on the diagonal seam. Is anybody here that has never made a half square triangle before? I wonder. Okay, there we go. So I now have all the parts for my block. But just before we move on, I'm just going to show you a clever trick. I'm going to cut a three and a half inch slice of this fabric. If you remember when we were doing the back to basics class, we used this little gadget here to cut our binding on the diagonal and this will work for also for half square triangles up to four and a half inch finished so if I put the three and a half inch line on the bottom of this strip so I've got three and a half inch strip I put the three and a half inch line on the bottom and I've got that little edge there and then I cut there and Move my body round, don't cut towards myself, cut there. I have a perfect half square triangle to join, which already has the bunny ears cut off. And those are really fast, I mean, you have no trimming to do. So I'm becoming a big, a bit of a fan of that. The other reason for using something like that is if you have a directional fabric, it makes it easy because you can keep your fabric all, always going in the right direction. So not so much with half squares, but quarter square triangles that we'll do another time cause problems with those. So we'll show other ways to do that. Okay, right, let's have a look at what we've got here and lay everything out. Helen loves her folded corner clipper. Oh, it's great, isn't it? It does so many different things. Okay, now well, let's put these away, arrange these again. The trick to this block is to make sure you keep everything arranged as you take it over to sew because it's very easy to stuff it up, isn't it, Carl? Mm. Did I do it yesterday? Never. Never. Was I unpicking at lunchtime? I don't know, I was outside. <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's how I'm going to arrange my block. Like that. I like that. So to take it over to the sewing machine, I'm actually going to carry the whole thing with me. So if you've got anything like a block, anything you can carry your blocks around on, it's always handy because it keeps everything in place. So we've sewn these What's that little blue gadget? Here. What's your blue gadget up there? What's my blue gadget? Oh, that's, oh, Kim gave that to me. I don't know where you can buy them from. It says sunflowerquilts.com. But when you're chain piecing, you can just use it to cut all your little threads. It's great. I must try and find some to put in the shop. Okay, let's put... We're going to join these rectangles together now. So line them up. This is what she means when she says chain, chain piecing. piecing. Yep, one after the other. This die here, die bounden. Mm, don't think so. Okay. 
at me, looking at me, going, oh, I'd be pinning that. <laughs> I don't pin everything. But you can if you want to. four see this is how this clever gadget works you go like that it's pretty clever right we need to press those Ready? So we've now got our block in nine units. Let's arrange this. That's good, that works out nicely because I've got some red there and there and there and there. I like that. I like that. Now I'm just having a little thought. Where did I put that other lady? She is. Oh no, she was bigger. She was too big. I thought about putting this other one in there in the center, which might be fun, but she's a bit too big, so we'll stick with this one. That's fine. So now we're going to join these pieces together in rows, like that. So this is the point where it's really worth picking up, sewing, putting down again, because this block is really easy to do the wrong way round. I'll pick it up, keep hold of the side that you're going to sew. outside today okay so that's going to go back like that now I'm going to sew that side on there again it depends how you feel if you want to pin at this point do feel free to my top row side we're sewing. that's going to go there, that on top. 
Di says, yes, I am, and Hi, I Di. am pinning. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're a pinner. <laughs> Okay, that's our three rows done. Now we're going to go and press them. So I'm going to press the top and bottom rows towards the center. my bottom row and the out the middle row I'm pressing to the outside these seams don't matter they they just got pressed towards the darker fabric it doesn't matter which direction they go in to join them woohoo okay again we're going to place them down before we pick them up and join them because what I did yesterday was I ended up with that so let's put them together now because we've pressed the seams in opposite directions we can now make them kiss so we line them up and this is the only thing that I can't actually show you you've got to feel it so you can feel when that pops together. If they're overlapping, you will feel it's lumpy. And if they're apart, you'll feel a little sort of gap in the middle there. But if you put them together and then just slide, they'll pop into place, hopefully. And this is where I definitely pin. That one. One, and I'm going to pin the end as well because I want that to match up there. So you see how this seam comes right through this diagonal. If you match that up with your corner, you'll get a nice point at the end. There we go. Right, I'm going to sew this seam. my seams as I'm sewing. So there's the top seam. Now we're going to sew this onto the bottom here. Hold your hands down when you do this so we can see. that up, feel it's nice and snug, pop a pin in, match this one up, feel it pop into place. Pop a pin in, that's a thick pin, what's that doing in my, there we go. If you didn't go to the other classes, I'm using these clover glass head patchwork pins. They're really fine and they won't bend your fabric the way other pins will. They're just really nice to use. Line all that up.
let's go and press let's go press doesn't really matter which way you press if you know what you're putting it next to you can sort of plan but you can always swap them over when you join them I'm just going to press it outwards because I've got a darker fabric here These are the keys to getting your blocks to look really nice. Take care with your pressing. Make sure you do press. Because if you don't, that's when you get errors and things creeping in. Pressing, matching up corners, measuring carefully. Quarter inch seam, those are the keys. Ta-da! There we go. So as you'll see, these points should be quarter of an inch from the edge so that when that's joined onto the next block this will sit really nicely as a little point on the outside of my block so thanks for coming to um watch and and learn about churn dashes and half square triangles i hope you're going to enjoy making a block or two um so i'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing your blocks you can carry on with different sized blocks and create your own version of a churn dash quilt. If you have square paper, you can actually draw one up on square paper. When I drew these, I used one square as an inch. And so that is one square of squared paper. Um, and then you can sort of plan and see what, what you're going to put together, which is really fun. And there we go, I'm going to put that one, oops, let's put that one up there, and because that's light I'm going to put her down there, and this darker one I'm going to put up here, with my tigers, really really fun, and a, a great way to use, say if you've got a fat quarter collection, or you've got a big stash of fat quarters, you can really uh, start to play with all those pretty and fun fabrics. So I hope you enjoy making them. Um, next week we may be, we'll probably be in the shop. So I don't know yet what the plan is um, for doing a class, but I will do more of these classes anyway. And there will be one on Thursday for triangles. So thanks very much for coming everyone and have fun. See you.